Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cult of Honesty here on a Wednesday night. I'm Bob Graves, co-host, and we're here tonight also with Dr. Jones. We also have uh, uh, 13 Heathens with us. We, uh, we have uh, Owen, which is with us. J.D. Wiley and uh, Daryl is with us tonight. And we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're just going to have some chit-chat. We're going to talk about a few things. But we also want to uh, uh, bring up the topic of what uh, Nathan Phelps is up to. And we want to talk about uh, uh, supporting what he's up to. And uh, anyhow, so uh, here is our main host, the guy. I, I love this guy. We have lots of fun chit-chatting and doing other things, getting into trouble. And uh, Dr. Jones, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You're always calling me when I'm in my PJs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 part of my uh, rudeness that I that I enjoy. <laughs> and you want to put that stuff all over the internet. That's fine. I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um what we're going to do on the 29th and I would like to get some feedback on this. This is a very meaningful time. It's it's a time in which we can all come together. This is going to be held on the 29th of this month, that is June 2014. Uh, Nathan Phelps, a wonderful, wonderful person. If I can ask everyone to mute their mic until they speak, that would be great. It sounds like someone's running a garbage disposal or something. Okay, here we go. Nathan Phelps, a marvelous, wonderful person. He's he's a very gentle soul. He's actually uh, going to do a documentary, and the name of the documentary is called "I'm Not My Father's Son." And what we want to do, uh, we want to do everything that we can to uh, encourage people to give to that project. He has a Kickstarter program, and I would encourage people to go there tonight. And if you can afford to give anything, uh, please do. If you can't, please don't. But Nathan Phelps. Uh, He's out there on the front lines fighting for uh, the rights of gays and lesbians uh, and transgender, uh, those issues. And, and, and we know, I, I was speaking with him a couple of nights ago, and uh, we were talking, you know, when all the laws are passed so gays and lesbians can get married, that's not when the battle is over. People are treated with disrespect all the time. And, this is going to take a lot of time, a lot of conversation. So many people, even those, though these laws are being passed, um, they certainly don't like gays and lesbians. And so we want to change that paradigm, if you will. But I think what Nathan Phelps is doing, I think he's changing the environment. That is with his, uh, if I can borrow a term from the church, with his testimony. And so I would like to talk about that tonight. Uh, can we come together as a people, both atheists and theists alike, and raise enough money, encourage a lot of people to come together and get behind Nathan Phelps and say, yes, we love you, we embrace you, we're going to empower you to take your circumstances and turn your circumstances into something gold for all of us. And that's what I'm wanting to do, and that's what I would like to talk about tonight. Who would like to speak up? Go for it. No. If someone's talking, I certainly can't hear you. And <laughs> Daryl, you're you're muted. Ah, uh, Daryl, trying to speak. I can see his mouth moving. But I uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard a little radio going on there too. But um, anyhow, um, I think it's going to be awesome. This uh, the, the commentary or the documentary, I mean, on uh, Nathan, uh, you know, and uh, my heart goes out to the guy because, uh, you know, I I know what it's like to not have had a good relationship with with a dad, and it's it's a, it is a uh, it, it can be a devastating thing in our culture in particular that uh, a, a young man gets a great deal of his sense of identity and his sense of purpose from where does he he thinks he comes from. I have no idea how much is biological and how much of it is cultural, but but it is significant for for us. And when so when you start out life like he does uh, as an adult, you know, going away, leaving home, uh, putting that all behind him, and uh, trying to figure out 
what he's going to do with that and how he's going to make ends meet. That's a, it, it's not just a way of, you know, you, it's not just finding a job, uh, you know, finding a place to live and, and those. There, there's a sense of who am I, where am I going, what is the, what's wrong with the world, what's wrong with me and all those questions. So to come out with a, a documentary saying, I am not my father's son is a is a strong statement I think that requires that we we really empathize with what he must have gone through to come to the ability to say that yeah can can you hear me now oh we can hear you yes go for it okay okay uh, yeah well I <laughs> I was uh, concerned about uh, my microphone and so I I may have to uh, come back to the thought that I was <laughs> thinking about uh, being heard, and so. Uh, but I, I I do agree with uh, Bob. Uh, you know what it makes me think of is that you know we easily readily recognize physical handicaps, and I don't know about everyone else, but when I see one some someone struggling to walk or having to be pushed in a wheelchair or any number of physical handicaps, my heart just automatically goes out to them. I mean, uh, I think of myself in that position and think, you know, that, that's got to be rough. But, you know, I think that uh, we as, as people uh, have mental handicaps that cripple us and they're not as obvious, but uh, sometimes I don't think we give enough attention to that sort of thing. And I think sometimes possible, possibly by doing so that we can help others uh, identify certain problems within themselves that uh, might be treatable, that, uh, that uh, can be helped and uh, people can move forward as a result. You know, this conversation is essential. Uh, there is a pastor in California. His name is Danny Cortez. He recently um, came out and stated that he loves the gay and lesbian community, and he is embracing it no longer as a sin. And he tells this story uh, that is in when he met this particular lesbian in he goes into detail as to what she said to him, but he, he stated that when he would meet with gays and lesbians over the years, he, he really had enough, nothing to offer them in terms of hope. He did to the drug addict, but he did not have anything that would really help gay and lesbians. And he, he would simply quote scripture, and he, he found himself you know, just being in this conundrum, if you will. But... Um, one day he met uh, this young lesbian at, at a restaurant and and she uh, asked him, Pastor, would you turn to your left and look at this gentleman to your left? And he did. And she said, why don't you go over there and hold his hand? Why don't you go over there and hug him and kiss him? Why don't you go to bed with him? And she said, you know, when you're trying to tell me what, you think the Bible says you're trying to impose all of that on me. That's how uncomfortable I feel when you're trying to, um, you know, reform me or to try to change me uh, with your doctrine. And that's when uh, he claims that things change for him. He said, you know, I, I no longer wanted to fight against that. Uh, I wanted to allow her to be who she is and love who she wants to love and find the beauty and quality of love, whoever that might be. I thought that was powerful for him to say. And and he's on the borderline of being fired, and also uh, his church is on the borderline of being expelled out of the Southern Baptist. And so um, this is a hot topic. And yet at the same time, we have this Nathan Phelps. Uh, he's on the front line of this kind of stuff. I mean, he is out there stating all kinds of wonderful things that... Uh, they're changing everything, and people are listening. People need to hear the testimonies of a person like Nathan Phelps. It's not just, quote-unquote, scientific rhetoric that changes the mind. Sometimes it just takes someone who speaks inspirationally like Nathan, and Nathan can inspire a lot of people. And This is why I'm encouraging everyone. If you've got a penny, a dollar, $10, $1,000, 
uh, simply go to you know his Kickstarter program and and uh, donate because he needs our help right now in order to um, meet the budget of putting this documentary together and we're going to spend all day on the 29th that is the new covenant group is and we're going to try to get as many people uh, together uh, simply to support this and what I'd like to ask for all of you guys to do if you can take the time to make a five minute video or a ten minute video supporting uh, Nathan Phelps and the gay and lesbian and transgender community I would like for you to do that and send it directly to me because I want to make sure that it plays over and over again on our network I don't want anyone to think that we're not supporting that community because when we pass the laws that's not when the battle is over we need to keep fighting for you know the equality and the nurturing and the love for all and hopefully uh, we can get uh, motivated in this direction. Can I make a couple of points very quickly, Dr. Jones? Yes, sir. When I think about Nathan Phelps, what inspires me about that man is if you can imagine being 18 years old, standing in the kitchen, or 17 rather, at, uh, at 11.59 on the day before your 18th birthday, standing in the kitchen by yourself in the dark with packed bags, staring at a clock, Yes. Saying in a matter of seconds, I'm going to leave this place and I'm going to leave everything that's familiar to me and I'm going to leave the people that I love because they are just so wrong and so hurtful and I can't do it anymore. Can you imagine the strength and the courage it must have taken to even consider that, let alone go through with it, to stand there in the kitchen and watch the clock and say, any moment now I'm going to run out that door and I'm never coming back. All the safety nets left behind. Truly amazing that he managed to do that. It shows a good heart and um, a, a sense of uh, resolve that is uh, just uncanny and admirable, uh, particularly for a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, yeah. That uh, kind of goes back to the point I was making. Um, you know, that is a, that's a powerful, as Dr. Jones was saying, testimony, you know, for someone to be able to do that. But I think that there are so many people that fit into that category that are afraid to take that step. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in closets that aren't necessarily because they're gay or, um, you know, things that are obvious. Right. <laughs> there you go. Good point. But uh, just just trapped, trapped in uh, religious dogma. Uh, fear of retribution and you name it and uh, so to hear someone that took that step and has landed where he has landed is, uh, is extremely powerful I think. I think it goes further um, to, to, to speak to his character that is that it takes a, a certain amount of character to, to do what he, what he did in this this picture that, that Owen just described but uh, um, he had every reason and opportunity and one might even say right to be uh, bitter about the life that he had up until up until that point and he chose none of that all, living with all that that vitriol and and hate spewing in inside of the, the walls of his home and uh, he turned out to be the amazing person that he is now that's uh, I think that speaks uh, even more to his character yes that's awesome yeah. You know, it also speaks to the, the fact that um, we, we often talk about uh, how certain influences affect a person growing up, and we have statistical data to indicate what sort of expectations are likely to occur with certain types of treatment, but I, I'm one who really believes that uh, when it comes to the impact that events have on us, that although the events themselves can have a huge impact, what we understand that event to actually mean has an even bigger impact on us. So that if he's growing up around all that hate and he's thinking that this is normal, and that this is right, that's, that's going to do far more damage than if he's growing around all that hate, but he's saying to himself, this isn't right, I, this isn't right. And so uh, somewhere, somehow, he was, he was extremely... Um, it was very fortunate that he took the attitude that he did, that he that he embraced the values that he embraced, uh, because uh, it not only helped him to walk away from it, 
it, it helped to minimize the kind of damage that kind of experience would usually do to a person. Yeah, well, you know, when you when he walked out of his house that night when he was 18, um, when he turned 18, he, he talks about how he 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 hadn't gotten past like his father's theology. He he thought he was risking hell by doing that. Like I'm sure he he hoped he yeah. would, that his father was wrong, but he didn't know that for sure. So yeah, he had, had to deal with that on top of just you know losing your home and all that, you know, risking hell. Sure, it sounds ridiculous now, but. Just someone raised in that kind of environment, God, he could just be scared out of his mind. You know, I don't think that any of us realize what he went through uh, in, in this uh, sense. You know, when you walk out of Egypt, that doesn't mean that Egypt is out of you. And uh, he confesses that even though he did leave, there was much of his father still in him. And it took years to, you know, let go of that. And so he has been on this journey of just letting go and letting go, becoming this awesome human being. And, you know, this is such a, a wonderful, wonderful story, a wonderful, wonderful human being. And this is why I'm asking everyone, contact your friends. Let's get behind this gentleman and demonstrate to him that life can be so much better. He needs to win here. He needs to raise enough money to where he can make this documentary and make the point that needs to be made for all of us. And I'm thankful that he has that voice today. And I think that if we get behind him and get our friends behind him, I think that we can move as a movement, if you will, and we can see some real change because Gays, lesbians, all kinds of people who have been bashed by religion, they need our help. They need our encouragement. They need to be inspired to say, I don't have to accept the damnation. I don't have to accept the condemnation. I can walk away from that and feel good about who I am, regardless of what everyone else thinks. Exactly. Dr. Jones, if, if uh, someone were to move forward on giving a, a donation, can you uh, tell us where we might go for that? Um, go to Kickstarter. Uh, you know where Kickstarter.com is? And you can I, I do look, now. You can, you, can look, yeah, you can look up the particular project, which is Not My Father's Son, and chances are there's no other project by that name, so you, you should be able to find it. Also, if you have a, an, an Android device or an iPad or something like that, you can actually download a free app for Kickstarter and search through that. Right, and you need to look at the different categories when you get to right. Kickstarter because if you give a certain amount, this is what happens, and you can even become a producer because these people, and I'm meeting with uh, his producers and filmmakers, all of them tomorrow, and these people are wonderful people to work with. And these people really have a heart of gold. I'm talking about awesome people. And this is a project worth jumping into. This is, this is something that you can be proud of. And, and um, many people are going to be able to have their names on this project. And I would encourage you, if you can afford it, you know, get your name out there. Because this will go down in history as something that did change a lot. And so I'm simply advocating that we get behind Nathan. He likes to be called Nate. He's a great gentleman. Um, and let's let's move this uh, move this forward. And JD, uh, with your kindness, uh, whatever you say, <laughs> it will change uh, water into wine for us. And so I'm encouraging all of you guys send us some videos to work with because Sean and the rest of the guys around here are going to work overtime trying to put the proper kind of edits together to let everyone know, hey, the New Covenant group's really coming out. We want to say, yes, we're behind LGBT. And uh, this doesn't have to do with biblical reasons. This just has to do with our love and compassion for all. That's the bottom line. Right. JD, were you able to find it? Uh, yeah, uh, Kevin was nice enough to, to post a, a link here. Um, he also went and did the math for us. Uh, of the fifty-five thousand dollars that they need, uh, they're looking for forty-three. Yeah, just go for forty-four thousand left to go. And do they give the t the cutoff date? The uh, the twenty-five project days. End? Twenty-five yeah. days left. Right. July seventh. And so on the 29th, I, my hopes uh, would be this, and and we've been in this 
uh, context for a long, long time doing videos, etc. We know what it may, means and how much it costs to make documentaries, etc. And fifty-five thousand dollars does the bare minimum, and that means that these guys are going to have to bleed to put it out. I'm hoping that we can be extremely gracious and prove to the church and prove to religious people, listen, we who are outside of the walls of the church, we are compassionist, and we're going to demonstrate to you that we are the givers, not the takers. We can move people forward. We have the compassion. We are willing to give of ourselves. And we're going to demonstrate this because as humanists, we can do this and do it well. Yes, and you know, two things just uh, for clarity in case you were wondering. Uh, n number one, the way this uh, uh, this project works, uh, if they raise the money, uh, the project continues to go, and uh, they'll. So I mean, if if a hundred thousand gets uh, donated, oh, they'll get a hundred thousand. I mean, so it doesn't it doesn't just end because they reach fifty five thousand. Um, uh, if they don't reach the the goal of fifty five thousand, the project comes to an end. And none of the pledges are collected. And if you make a pledge, you'll end up having to kind of go through Amazon.com, as it were, because then Kickstarter is a part of Amazon. And uh, you'll you'll give your credit card information. And what they do is they wait for the goal to be reached. If the goal is reached before the end date, that's when they transact the the business after the goal has been reached. So you know the the truth is is. Uh, they won't ever take a project that's not really as fully funded as it needs to be and then take the donations anyway, which are not going to go to what you wanted it to go to because they didn't raise enough money to do it. So uh, there's a sense here in which um, you know, you're not giving to something where it's if it doesn't really work, it's not going to work anyway because if they don't reach the goal of pledges, then nobody ends up you know, spending the money. But they can certainly go over and, uh, you know, so... Uh, that, that's for people who are, are concerned about well, what happens if the, you know I I really like to see this happen, so I don't want to give now if it's not going to work. But I'll you know no, I'll make the pledge now, make it happen, and uh, and if it doesn't happen, we'll do it again in a different way. Now I'm yeah. asking all of you guys to flood me with the people who need to be on that day. We will start at 11 o'clock a.m. and end approximately at 10 or 11 that evening. I want to have as many people on supporting uh, Nathan Phelps and the LGBT movement, and we want to get uh, this thing going to where it's one of these days where it's just an exciting day. And so uh, I'm going to back away from the microphone and hear from you guys. You guys are much more exciting than I am. Inspire some. Is that, uh, that going to be in lieu of the regular NCG Sunday stuff or in addition to it? or What, what we're going to do is we are dismissing, I mean, all of our shows, I'm going to, and they don't even know this yet. All of our hosts do not know this yet. I'm just saying this is what we're going to do. I'm asking of them to do this because there is a, a, a window of opportunity for him. If he doesn't get that $55,000, um, that is, by that end mark, he gets none of it. And this needs to go forward. Uh, this is something that doesn't need to fail. Um, and this this is why I, I really feel uh, very strongly about it, and I'm simply going to ask, not impose, if some of our hosts don't want to do it, you know, they're at liberty to do what they want to on their shows, but I'm simply going to say, hey, listen, let's just... Uh, do something. This is very, very time sensitive. Let's be humanists. Let's be people who care. Let's show Nathan Phelps we are behind him, period. And so I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on supporting one individual that is yeah. for the sake of us all. Because Hopefully we can get a little clip of Nathan or Nate. Uh, we are going to get a lot of stuff from Nate and uh, and many of the uh, the makers of, of the film crew, etc. And, and I'm I think that David Silverman and, and Lawrence Krauss and other people are going to come along on this. And so we're going to be pulling in a lot of great names uh, in that day. And so um, I just need you guys <coughs> to start revving it up. In other words, uh, it's a grassroots thing. We need to start revving this up and everywhere we go on Facebook, let's talk about it. Let's get people involved because we want our numbers that day to go way up, not for the sake of NCG, but for the sake of helping Nate get a story out because it will change its dynamic. It will change everything. 
You know who I think uh, would be a, a fantastic help, and I don't know if you're in contact with him over it or not already. If you are, that's wonderful. If not, uh, take take this and run with it if you want. Uh, is uh, Jerry Dewitt? Nobody gets me fired up like that guy does. Uh, if he could uh, could speak to the issue and, and get people revved up to, to donate, I, I think he would do fantastic with that. I probably yeah, need to get him on before. The studio. Yeah. I need to get him in the studio. That's what I need to do. I need to get him in here in Pensacola on the 29th because that guy, he can preach. He can motivate. Yeah. I mean, I, let, let him go. Come on. Amen. I mean, we can get... <laughs> We can have a revival, if you will, with that guy. I mean, he is awesome. You're right. Frank I need Schaefer. to contact him. Frank Schaefer. Okay, yes. I'm going to write down these names because uh, we, we need to get this thing working and going. NCG is about us working together. It's not about one person being over anyone. It's it's about us uh, having enough respect with each other and about each other and and willing to say, hey, we can do this. Uh, if Owen would come to Pensacola on that day and preach with Jerry DeWitt, oh, man. It, it would be uh, better than the, uh, you know, the Azusa Street revival. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, he would stop. turn water into wine. Oh, he would turn placid <laughs> into a rouse. Turn water into crystal. <laughs> he would turn coal into diamonds with the mere pressure of his presence within the community preaching what Owen has to say in the lentastic way that he does. I also have another... <laughs> that I'm coining that lentastic. I love with it. the pretentious voice. <laughs> I have another suggestion who would be good to have on for that if you could reach him. Uh, anybody ever heard of... He's a very progressive, liberal... Um, Pastor uh, Reverend Barry Lynn. No, Give you another good one. Yeah. Have Possibly Caleb name. Miller. Caleb Miller would be a, a great person to have on. That guy, he he ignites people. Could we possibly get Jesus Christ Himself? Oh, that'd be even that'd be the most awesome thing ever. Get JC in. Get him in. Get him down. JC, come on, JC. I heard he's doing yeah. carpentry. He's supposed to do a second coming pretty soon. <laughs> so, let's, he might be here. let's talk to Kirk Cameron about that. Yeah. Oh, he just, oh. Yeah, he just might be here by then. Oh, dear. Ray, Ray Comfort may come and support this movement. No, he won't. <laughs> how, about, how about Bill Nye? Wouldn't that be awesome? Bill Nye. Uh, yeah, that'd be something now you get Bill Nye and that would really be something, but sure. They'd take an it's not exactly, it yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not exactly his thing. He tries to stay away from the religion topic. If any of you guys uh, have any contacts with any of these people, if they can give me five minutes during the week just to record them, just saying something positive, that's going to be a game changer for a lot of things. Sarah Moorhead, she's going to be heading up some of these... Uh, these things in 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 uh, that are involved in this weekend and uh, and so uh, we're we're gonna encourage our hosts. They don't have to do so, but I'm encouraging all of our hosts to make this about uh, doing something good for uh, Nathan Phelps since he's moving so many things forward. I'm thinking of some musicians I know who might you know uh, someone like say Shannon McDonald, the bass player. Um, uh, Christopher, do you know who she is? No. Yeah, an amazing bass player. Um, thinking of May Pang. Um, people, people listen to these people. Although it's not necessarily the the people in the theist and atheist kind of circles that people would know. But I'm I'm just trying to think of names, you know. Yeah, Levi. Can, do you think that you could get Don Francisco to be on my show for about five minutes concerning this? Yeah, I could ask. Um, Don and uh, I know Michael Harden. He's uh, he'd be a good one to get. Uh, Brian McClellan. Brian McClellan. Yeah. Or McClellan. McLaren. I like to add Brian more, McLaren. Uh, yeah, Brian McLaren is awesome. Do you have any contact with Rob Bell? No. It'd be nice though. Yeah, you. I, I was thinking of that, but he's kind of hard to. He's a big deal. Uh, the bigger they are, the better. Um, they could learn something here at NCG. 
character. Yeah, Oprah Winfrey. No, oh, that's an impossibility. <laughs> Come on, let's dream. That was Come awesome. On. Oprah. <laughs> I think we should totally, uh, you know, do Oprah, Doctor Phil, uh, you know, Doctor Oz. Uh, oh, we should have I all of like. them. Uh, yeah. Rick Warren, Joel Olstein. Yeah. Let's just, Mark you know, yeah. let's just go for I, that. I I do have a way to Doctor Phil, Pope. but it but it would really be abusing uh, contacts. <laughs> is that a pun? What's that? Is that a pun? Are you being punny? I, I didn't mean to be, but no. My my nephew, I have a nephew who uh, went to boarding school, and his roommate was Doctor Phil's uh, son, Jordan. So they're roommates, but my nephew and uh, but um, and but his son's really, a musician, right? What's that again? Uh, Doctor Phil's son is a musician. Correct. Yeah. 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 And he uh, actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had something to do with the Dr. Phil theme for the first couple of years. Well, the second theme that he had was done by by Jordan, and it didn't work out so well. But uh, his his first theme, I don't think he was on the first theme, but um, there was a second theme he was a part of. But yeah, and uh, but he's he's much he's a much stronger musician these days than he than he used to be. It builds character. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we totally uh, uh, took this down a completely different rabbit hole. Um, point being, we need people to uh, support the uh, Nate Phelps uh, experience uh, in that it's better than the Jimi Hendrix experience. <laughs> but uh, who else could we get? I mean... I have an idea. We, we need we need theists. We need atheists. We need we need a um, we need an NCG version of what it means to come together around a topic, right? And so, if 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 it is merely theistic, it doesn't serve a purpose. If it is merely atheistic, it further doesn't serve a purpose because um, you know a motto and and prudence. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this to you as soon as I finish uh, what I'm gonna say because I know you have something to say. Um, the motto of the New Covenant Group is, you know, atheists and theists together. And you know what that means? That means that that label doesn't make any goddamn sense. And that means that we're humans. And because we're humans, we need to approach this very topic not from a religious, lack of religion perspective, but as a, all right, what's going down? Do we agree? Do we line up? What do we do? So... Dr. Was, Jones. Oh, oh, Prudence, I was going to throw it to you. Now it's yeah, your turn. I, I just wanted to say there was one idea I did have that would help with the project. Um, you, you, what you really need to do also is uh, if you make like a collab video, uh, you can put it on the YouTube channel. You might all, a better strategy would also try to get the bigger name YouTubers to mirror the video. That always helps. YouTubers. Is that like a potato? <laughs> well, no, I said, yeah, mirror the video. Like, you can, if you get someone we, like... We know, we know what you meant, Prudent. He's being a schmuck. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, who's talking about potatoes? <laughs> Maori. How many did you have for lunch? <laughs> None. I don't understand why I have to go with the racism, Christopher. So much hate, man. It's, it's not so much hate as much as it is love. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would have like talked William to Paul like this? Young. Someone like William Paul Young. William Paul Young. I have no idea who that is. What about uh, he, he? He's the author of the book The Shack. All right. Uh, well, you yeah. know what? I, I think that we need to uh, bust John Shook's chops. I, I think I, I need to uh, send out an email to Dr. John Shook because yeah. I think that he has a couple connections that would facilitate this very thing. I so agree. And John Shook, if you're watching, expect an email. That's not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded ever so slightly like a threat, Chris. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's ever so slightly like a threat. Hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what I meant was, hey, expect an email. <laughs> it's the word expect that's killing you. That's the word that's murdering you right now. It's the word expect. Do not deny the email that you will receive. <laughs> <laughs> 
There you go. Miles. You know, I, I, um, I might actually get to meet Dr. Shook at the end of July. Um, the, me and the other officers of the ISU Atheist Agnostic Society were invited to the uh, Center for Inquiry, Inquiry Leadership Conference in Amherst, New York at the end of July, and we're planning on going. I don't know if he's going to be there or not, but I know he works near there, and like that's, that's his organization. I've never right. been to an event like that before, so that, that should be pretty interesting. If we drive, I we're, we're not sure if we're going to drive or not, but I might just have to stop in Philadelphia along the way. Oh, totally. <laughs> Hit me up. Hey, if any, well, again, if anybody wants to ever come to Arizona, I'm always waiting. You, you, you I will guarantee that there's a 30% chance you'll survive the heat wave. Are you waiting? <laughs> Christopher, on a serious note, do you think that we can help um, Nathan raise this money? Well, you know what? Um, that actually raises more more questions than it does answers because um, the simple answer is yes. Why do I believe that? Well, uh, because we are the New Covenant group. We are the NCG. What is the NCG? Um, the NCG is a volunteer organization of uh, atheists and theists bringing atheists and theists together. So um, what's more, um, what casts a wider net? Just theists? Just atheists? Or atheists and theists? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I didn't think about it like that. Um, yeah, a combination of the two. So, it, it, if we were going to direct our energy towards supporting something specific, I do think that even though we have a smaller voice because we choose not to argue with everybody and have civil conversations, I do think that the quality regardless of the lack of quantity based on, you know, like the, the super popular YouTube, uh, you know, channels that have thousands of subs because they scream at each other and we don't. Uh, I think the quality of backing and grassroots movement that we can get behind somebody is better than um, getting it from somewhere else because it's not just a theist thing, it's not just an atheist thing, it's a New Covenant group thing. And that means that, you know, we're even-handed in such a way that we're going to treat you like humans. And if, if, if you're going to address something that's going to benefit humans, you've won our, you, you've won our attention. Go ahead, Levi. Oh, I was going to say that um, I love documentaries. Um, uh, something about a documentary, I think, that brings a more uh, human feel to what the topic being presented. I know that the documentary uh, Hellbound by Kevin Miller, uh, when I saw that, and it laid out the three different views of um, heaven, hell, and annihilationism, and uh, you really got to put a face to a theology or way of thinking, and you saw things played out on more human level and not so much like this, you know, this theological discourse. And actually they had the, the Westboro Baptist uh, people in the movie. And uh, I just remember that documentary having a big impact on, um, on my life. And so uh, I just think documentaries are a great way of opening people's eyes. So, yeah, yeah. do it. I had a I conversation... Think totally I was going to say that totally depends on the documentary because uh, uh, if it's a crappy documentary, it actually encourages me to close my eyes and fall asleep. That's with anything. Anything yeah. crappy causes yeah. you that crappy which is, music. Which is crappy. why we want to exceed the 55,000. I think it's going to take oh. double that to make it an excellent documentary. Yes. Uh, I had a conversation with one of the most uh, homophobic uh, people that I've ever known in my life. And uh, we've had many conversations, but we had a private conversation this time. And it went on for about an hour, an hour and a half. And it turned out to be very, very positive. This person seems like they are turning a bit. And I'm thankful for that. 
And so I'm going to do my best to go after a lot of theists who really look at this kind of stuff as nonsense. I, I want them to, in a sense, um, taste and see that this is good. You know, they, they sing in church songs like Taste and See That the Lord is Good, but they, they need to taste and see that atheists are good. You guys are awesome. You guys have done so much for me, You've done so much for my wife, you have done so much for everyone around us. Uh, this is an awesome time to be alive. We are benefiting from one another, and this is why this is working so, so well. And yes, Christopher, NCG is the place where quality is, and at one point, maybe in the future, at some point in the future, we might have the quantity to go along with it, because I'd like to see everyone having the quality. Well, it's not only the place for quality, it's, um, in, and here's where my elitism comes in, and I've admitted this many times. Um, if you're not up to the conversation that we would like to have on NCG, have the kind of conversation you want to have somewhere else because the level of uh, the, the criteria that we have in order to you know have the kind of conversation we have uh, demolishes the whole well I'm going to argue with you about this detail because this detail prevents you from you know resonating with my version of truth bullshit what we're going to do is accept certain things that need to be accepted and have really fun, awesome, intellectual, academic conversations about important topics. If that's what you're into, keep tuning in. That's good. So are we having a fedora off? Yeah, I saw Dr. Jones, and so I decided... <laughs> hey, come on, come on, Christopher. Come on. <laughs> Give hey, it baby. to me. Give it to hey, me. Baby. What are you talking about? Come on, pick up that. I'm gonna pick up that you forty dollar base. You can't here, make man. no goddamn red gravy. You can't I've make got that forty dollar base. Look at this. Look at this. Let me get it. Let me get it. Forty dollar. <laughs> make you oh, Forty dollar make you holla. <laughs> How those strings sound? I don't get have it going out. sideways, but there we go. I love that base. All the hats. Ha <laughs> ha! There he is. Now Kevin's in the mix. Where are you at, Lenny? I really wish I owned a fedora at this point. I really. Wait, got I, no hat? I, I, I've too. got a. I've got a massive head, so hats don't you normally fit me. Give me a break. I really no. My cranium is a massive head. I do have a massive head. Yeah. Seriously, you can't find any hats that fit your head. Yeah. No, there there are no hats <laughs> that fit me. Sort of as a rule, no. My what about a baseball said, cap? The day I was born, my mother got the hard part of getting me out on the way out of the way first. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so many jokes. So little time. All right, big head. See, we haven't actually heard that much from the Westboro Baptist Church in the last few months, have we? Since since uh, Pastor Phelps died. I was going to ask if anyone knew or if the information has been released on why Pastor Phelps was uh, excommunicated and toward his last days. He I wasn't... Think the... I think the reason was he was supposed to be around until the end of times, and I guess when they realized that that probably wasn't going to happen, I guess everybody jumped on the big, oh, then he's a false prophet wagon. No, I don't buy that. That's not that's not a real... I, I, there's, I really want to know. Like, there's, there's something... Well, he's not supposed happened. to die, is he? He's supposed to be raptured. The, the dark days, the last dark days are upon us, and those who are going to heaven are going to be raptured, and anyone who dies in between from any kind of sufferance... Uh, was never supposed to go there, and if you're not, and if you're not one of the elect, as they say, then you're not supposed to be in the church. And that's why they gave him the boot. I, if, is that like? Can anyone back that up? That's that. That would be my reasoning. Uh, that that's said entirely without evidence. Okay. You know what? Uh Oh, and the worst part about what you just said is your hat being your friggin' enormous headphones with the uh, microphone. Um, <laughs> I pales, landed late in my off time. Hails in comparison to Prudent, what, um, Levi, and uh, Kevin, 
everybody is rocking a hat. This not is my well, not JB. I'm wearing oh. my winter hat in freaking 100 degree weather. Good for you. Carla, yeah. do we have any hats in this house? <laughs> to fit my enormous head, it's like an orange on a toothpick. Why? Because the weird people on the internet are telling you to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm so influenced. Dude, it's live. Crazy. It's live, but it's you have to do it, man. Because I, 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 I wish I could help you. I used to be into. Um, for Lend years, that. I wore an Indiana Jones hat from the ages of like nineteen to twenty-five. I think I wore an Indiana Jones hat everywhere I went. No, but it's, now too it's, bad. Uh, it's too bad. Thirteen left because I like we could talk about the hats thing. Like that would be a wonderful thing to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know, yeah, we don't need him. We, yeah, we don't. We don't need thirteen heathens. Whatever, him and squirrels. Squirrel. You might have a squirrel hat. Do you wonder what happens to the children though when they start to get older? Have you noticed how how many of them seem to be seem seem to have left? Um, that the Westboro Baptist Church, they seem to sort of grow up and sort of uh, walk mm -hmm. out on it. Megan well, you, Phelps you, you... left. Uh, she's not the only one. I. I don't know how many have left. There's but, two, uh, two others, I think. I'm not exactly sure on that. Not, not very many. Yeah. More you, stayed. you can control a child's environment for a certain period of time. You can't control their dreams. You can't control their goals. And you can't control what they're going to turn out like once they um, uh, receive abstract knowledge such that they understand what you understand. Right. Yeah, so, I think that, that kind of fundamentalism is come on. It's, it's something that has to be reinforced constantly. Like, why do you think there are nice like, fundamentalist, fundamentalist colleges? Why do you think they always, they, at homeschool, they try to keep any kind of worldly influence, like when you do the movies or games or anything that's not Christian, that doesn't reinforce that theology out? Because that theology, it it's not self sustaining. Maybe, you know, saw other forms of Christianity, sure, but that. Uh, once you get someone out in the world, I don't think you can maintain that. Oh, yeah. That's why they have cults. about um, homeschooling our girls uh, <laughs> because, of, because of that, you know. It seemed like to be the, uh, the uber-Christian or, you know, if you really love Jesus, then um, you'll keep your kids at home and you'll, uh, you'll teach them how wrong evolution is. And, um, you know, because when they go to public school... All they're they're gonna be indoctrinated with all that evil scientific stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, luckily, we uh, <laughs> we we uh, grew out of that in just enough time. Oh well, yeah, that's that's it. I was I was homeless. For those who don't know, I was homeless for for eight years and. Yeah, that, I have some regrets about about that one. Not that I could have done anything about it. You can go to Bob Jones University and major in biology. I, 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 I don't get it. Yeah. Bob's heart seems hurt when he says stuff like that. He just, just when he says, and Bob Jones University offers a major in biology. Think about it. And then, like, without him saying it, he's like saying, "Think about that." Think about the words that I just used. Does that not hurt you? If it doesn't hurt you, then there's something wrong. <laughs> well, hang on. Is it is it because that they offer a biology program, or is it That's where I went because the school. university I is called Bob Jones, not Bob Graves? No, it's where I went to school first. It's my first college, and uh, I was uh, I was a dedicated fundamentalist. Christopher, I love your hat. I switched it up. <laughs> I'm loving Levi's hat. <laughs> I think uh, Levi wins the hangout. What is uh, that? that Levi wins the intro so much better than that. that. <laughs> you see that, Doctor Jones? Look at Levi. My Sunday hat. So now, 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 Levi's got it. Yeah. I had the better hat before him. Damn. Man, prudent, prudent I, hat. I stole from my daughter for nothing. Prudent, come on, speak to me. Come on, you've got to show that hat off. All right, now what about mine? 
Yeah, I mean seriously, like I said, this is my this is a winter hat, and I'm in Arizona. This is a hundred degrees outside. Uh, well, a bit hot headed there. Yeah, <laughs> it's a damn good looking hat. Yeah, it was a hat. Uh, yeah, I remember I got it uh, about a few months ago when it actually was around forty degrees here. Surprisingly, back in December. Well, all we need is thirteen to come in here with his silly raccoon tails, his shaman hat. But does that does that hat have Brandy's name on it, Levi? He's nodding. Hey, Levi, that hat looks uh, like the hat of the first lady in a church. Yeah, this is this is the prophetess's hat. Uh, Camel toe. I don't know how many of you are aware of Camel toe and her prophecies, but uh, I wear this hat. It has such an anointing on it. So. You dirty troll. <laughs> <laughs> Prophesy. Oh my goodness. Things have got a little bit silly here at the NCG. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking What's of hats, who is it that we could tip our hat to? Is what the hell is going on with you, board? Owen? What? what is that? What is going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this hat belongs to you. an eight-year-old. This is I what need... I had to do. To I, need, people. <laughs> I need you to talk for at least a full minute so that people can appreciate well, what, what is I on your head. I don't know how I could sound, possibly sound profound or serious or inspirational when I've got a ridiculous <laughs> hat like this on because I'm pretty sure SpongeBob's face hasn't looked this stretched out in many, many years. This is not actually what he looks <laughs> like. It's just being stretched out to oblivion here. But, but, uh, by your massive potato head. By my right? massive potato <laughs> brain. <laughs> it's mostly pudding in there. Oh dear! This uh, I think uh, Lenatar now wins the internet. Thank you, thank you. I've been waiting uh, for that award for some time. You know what? That that's a brave. That's that's brave, man. Uh, uh, this, I'm sorry. Was the Mankini not prove enough of my bravery? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, enough Mankini of my courage. Wins. Daryl, I think you need to start singing right now because you've got that vibrato that sounds like Don Francisco. Do it. Oh, oh. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Keep going. Do it again. He's alive and I'm forgiven. <laughs> Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. He's alive. Like a voice from the past. <laughs> hey, I was a Francisco fan. You have to go up on that last alive there, I noticed. You have to go sort of down here, and then it's all the way up on the last one. Yeah, well, I took a lower key than what he would uh, normally do. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. Now, years ago, you used to sing this song, Peace Give I to Thee. Uh, sing it a little bit. Of that, not too much of it because I, I really don't agree with all of it. But you know, it it sounds good. Give us a yeah, taste of it. Come on. All right. Peace. Let's, you with that again. Let's sing it with me. Yeah, you used to harmonize with me on that. Uh, I, I can't harmonize. I've been around this forty dollar <laughs> bass that Maudi changed up, and, and he he's a show off. He's good. I'm not. Forty dollar. Forty dollar make it holler. <laughs> Go for it, Daryl. Peace give I to thee. Peace give I to thee. Peace give I to thee. Is that enough? I mean, if I sing yeah. any more. Yeah. Okay. Don't you like his vibrato? His vibrato is awesome, isn't it? Come I'm on. not getting any. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everybody should be saying Darryl. that. Yeah. Daryl's yeah. killing it with the vibrato. Yeah. There you go. That's right. That works. Seeing as it's getting close to 9 o'clock, uh, uh, anyone mind if I inject an actual discussion topic into the conversation? No. Uh, With these hats on? <laughs> Actually, well, hat's that's off the point. <laughs> no, no, hats, hats, hats stay on because it's relevant. Um, if uh, I don't know if anyone, I'm sure some people here saw the interview that Maudi did on his show with uh, 13 Heathens uh, about a week ago, and they were talking about um, the different hats that we wear, meaning... I saw that. Different perspective. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> the different perspectives that we have, or different personas that we take on when we, you know, deal with different situations or different people. So I guess I would ask, what are some of the hats you wear? Hmm. Whoever. 
Bob, go first. Well, you know, uh, in school, um, I, of course, I have to put up with more nonsense there than I have to put up in my private life, because you know, students pay to be there, and I'm not at I'm not at a, in a privileged position to just say, I don't like you out of my class or something like that. But um, uh, so I find I have to be sometimes a lot more easier going than I would normally be. Um, I'm, I'm usually pretty easy going, but I, I tend to um, I tend to not put up with people who give me a lot of nonsense. Yeah, it's no, no nonsense. <laughs> I like that. But, but I mean, at school, I don't have I, I'm not as free to do that because um, mm -hmm. you know uh, it could result in in, in outcomes that complicate. Um, I'm a representative of the school, not just a representative of myself, you know. How is that different from you being a representative of NCG? How's that hat? Oh, you know, in that hat, I really get to be me. I really do. Um, now, I'll tell you what, that there, there's some more pushing back that I could do as a theist. I could, but at the same time, it's it's not anything that I find important uh, and as a result um, I don't um, you know and I think it's far more important that we uh, that we maintain dialogue that we that, that we get along and, um, and 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 some of the ways in which I might have a, a you know a personal opinion about something I don't even hold that opinion that strongly you know, it's so. I don't push back as much as, as I could. Uh, if I'm in another situation where I'm uh, where, where I'm in private and I'm speaking to somebody else who is who is a believer, maybe even more traditional, um, I would perhaps not try to be as alarming, and I would be more confirming of what it is that I could agree with them on, you know, um, and uh, and things like that. So I do find that sometimes when I'm with certain traditional believers, that I uh, I don't wear my unconventionality on my sleeve. Uh, an example of that would be that every uh, every Labor Day I go to this retreat, and it's a, a Dan Stone retreat. Uh, and Dan Stone was an author; he's he's since passed away. Um, who who his primary message was the concept of the indwelling of of God within us. Now, a lot of these people there at that retreat are, are far more traditional than I am. I don't raise too much of um, a stink of different things there. Uh, however, one of the leading um, for, uh, people who speaks at this uh, retreat is a, is a theologian I like a lot. His name is uh, James Fowler. Uh, his website is ChristInYou.net. I can talk to him and I can say to him anything that I would say here, and uh, and he. He appreciates it. He understands. He tells me, "Is you, you write a book, I'll publish it." You know, and um, so I, I suppose that when I'm there, I, I'm careful not to be. I, I don't see a need to upset people who are traditionalist when they're not necessarily doing anything bad or offensive, and when I'm really there to get something out of what they're saying anyway. So uh, that would be I'd be a little different in that circumstance. You know, one of the interesting things that I think is uh, that I think about people is that I often think that um, our what we identify as weaknesses in is very situational. In one situation, we might view us uh, view a certain part of our personality as a weakness, but in other situations, you find that it actually it's one of your best qualities. Like, do you know what I mean? I am uh, I can be quite bullheaded and stubborn. No. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, no, no, Bob, oh, yeah. stop it, stop it. Bob, I know you won't believe that, but you need to listen, please. Um, <laughs> I can be quite, I can no, I can't. I can be quite bullheaded and, and and stubborn and just kind of, you know, immovable on a, on a situation. But on the flip side of that, it means I'm um, defiant, and I don't back down easily, and I know how to push back when in situations where I need to push back. 
Um, I've definitely seen that expressed a little bit in the uh, in the role playing game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, in some situations, I'm I'm thoughtless. I'll act completely without thinking the situation through, and I'll leave myself in a train to disaster. And sometimes people come with me. Um, but on the other hand, uh, that thoughtlessness and impulsiveness can be quite useful. While others are talking, I'm acting. And I'm moving, and I'm trying to make things happen. And sometimes that helps to shuffle other people along. So it's hard for me to sort of say that, you know, I... But when people, we talk about who are you really and what hats do you wear. I like to think that I know who I am. You know, I, I'm Lenny. I'm Owen. I better be him because I'm paying enough of his fucking bills. For heaven's <laughs> sake. <laughs> if, I'm not, if I'm not, I don't know whose bills I'm paying. How about those different hats that we saw being worn by Ozzy... And uh, Shanna Rocky, and uh, I can't remember who else was in there, but that video that they posted where they oh, each yeah, were doing J- what you shouldn't do. Yeah. Oh, JD my Kane gosh. And yeah, what you don't do. <laughs> that that, that was video, great. the first 25 minutes of the video, that was hard to watch. They were so unreasonable, all of them. And it, it was it was... And the truth was, when I first started watching it, I wasn't sure what I was in for it. And I'm listening to Ozzy, who I gotta tell you, Ozzy is one of my heroes. Um, and he he's saying things that I'm thinking. At first, I heard him talk. I'm going, Ozzy, what the hell are you thinking? And I'm getting ready to send him a note. The old, you know? the old Orson Welles routine. You tune into the broadcast halfway through. You don't know the context, and you think the world's <laughs> turned upside down and inside out. It, but he was terrible. But but I thought they all did well. And then they each critiqued their their own poor bad habits. I thought they did a good job. It was it was awesome. But I tell you, it was brutal to watch it. It was horrible. <laughs> Not nearly as horrible as you know the kind of what what it was a response to generally. Yeah, but you know that can that could be useful to put yourself in the persona. Try to try to you know whether for the purposes of parody or just making a point, put yourself in the boots or in the hat, as it were, of someone you people you just are. I don't want to say hate, but completely disagree with. Did you, see the, out of here. did you see the video of Dr. John Chuck pretending to be some farmer fundamentalist talking with Greg Bray? That was pretty good. I don't think so. I, I, I did, saw. I did see the, sh- the clip of him coming on to uh, T-Bog with Matt and, and Joey. I thought that was just <laughs> hilarious. Anyway, that <laughs> video so where he was pretending to be the farmer fundamentalist talking to Greg Bray was the first video live that my wife actually saw and I was telling her about you know John Shook's coming to town and he's gonna be doing a few shows and uh, you know he's um, you know he wrote the book the God debate so he's, 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 he's one of these movers and shakers he's one of these guys making things happening and so we're kind of looking forward to his contribution and so Lisa starts watching this program in the middle of it and she comes back to me she goes are you sure you want this guy? <laughs> 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 it was tremendous. That's good. <laughs> she didn't realize he was putting on a persona. It was funny. Yeah, when you, you, you your first introduction to a person, like when you first meet them, that's something I think this this topic, what we're discussing now, is something that you need should stay be aware of. Because the perspective of that person, like the first time you meet them, it, it it may not be really who they really are. You know, a lot we all, as thirteen would say, we all play characters in this community. But it is part of who they are, though. It's a, it's a very small fragment of who they are, just by the merit of yeah. the fact that they are being that way. It is part of. They're capable mm-hmm. of being that. Like you know what I mean? Sure. It's, it, yeah. it, it, it is you part should, of it. It's, it's a, that, the hat, the first hat you meet, you shouldn't let that color your perspective of the sure, whole person. Yeah. I've been I've been guilty of that a, a number of times. Well, some operative people like word, actually, Operative word is capable. Right. Quite right. Just because you're people, capable of it well, doesn't mean. Go ahead. You, Christopher you want, you hides want, you want his, to make a bit. Christopher hides his hatred of Ozzy quite well. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Lenny. 
some people actually wear their hats quite literally on their sleeve, right? You know what I mean? They're, they're very mm -hmm. upfront about certain aspects of who they are. Like, when I, if I go up to a bar and I see a girl sitting at the bar and I, she's quite a pretty girl, I go, I'd like to go talk to her, I sit down next to her and then I just see lots of swastika tattoos all up and down her arm. I'm like, you know what? We're done. We're done. Before we started, we're done. You know what I mean? So some people will, will, will wear parts of their personality quite up front. And you can tell a lot about what a person's really like just by observing the clothes they wear, their body language, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, how, and how they react to certain stimuli. Like, you know what I mean? Although a lot of that, it can be circumstantial as well. But um, I don't think there are as many facets to people's personalities as, as even some people tend to think they are. And uh, uh, I, th I think people are much simpler than we give them credit for. I think one one example of what I good example of what I was uh, um, talking about and what uh, one of the times I misjudged someone on first impressions would be uh, raw fifty sixty nine. I really liked when you you and uh, Maudi and thirteen had that conversation with them a few nights ago. Oh, that was so hilarious. He's so so goofy. much fun. But my first. Encounter, I like. I was aware of him before this, but my first real encounter with Ra was a certain incident where he, uh, um, him and Thirteen had a little bit of a uh, disagreement over something, and he stalked a hangout Thirteen was running and made a bunch of creepy videos, and that, like, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Sure, sure. And and yeah, it's like him and I've I've heard uh, I haven't talked to talked to him, but I've heard similar things about Rand Campbell, that he's completely different from the, the character he plays, who's this kind of really terrible, toxic person, but that he can be really nice behind the, you know, behind the live camera. And that's, yeah, it's like, it's in this community, sometimes, you know, we spend so much time talking about religion, we don't get to see very much of what people are like when they're not talking about it, especially on, you know, the extreme the theist side of the spectrum. I want very much to change the conversation, personally. I want very much to sort of... Did, uh, we have these characters, right? We have these people who we, who we see online, and we have the religion debate and whatever else, and that's all awesome. But I want to talk about... I want to take those characters and talk about different things with them. Because mm -hmm. you can get a lot closer to finding out who they are. I'd love, I had a most fabulous conversation with Ozzy about um, sci-fi movies. And uh, I found out a lot about the guy just by talking about films. And various other things, and you saw yourself with Raw. As soon as he got off the subject with uh, of religion, he turned out to be a hysterical, big character, lovely guy. Um, so it, uh, I'd like to take the people I've met in the religious debate and sort of take them out of that context and bring them into a different conversation. It'd be, a, I think, it'd be a lot of fun. I love talking about sound, and I like. Oh, I could talk about the Beatles all day. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Beatles. I'll tell you about all those. Concerts that he went to. Best band ever. Ah, uh, that's a big. That's a, that, that's that's the uh, best band ever. I don't know. That's actually um uh, uh quantitatively uh, demonstrable. Quantitatively demonstrable. Look, you're gonna use your fifty thousand dollar words of me. I'm not interested. All right. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying. I was so hoping to intimidate you into shutting up because the Beatles. <laughs> Rock. No, no, they were very good. I mean, I have a number of their albums. I'm not going to sit here and say the Beatles sucked, although they were from Liverpool, and let's be honest, nothing good <laughs> comes out of Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a chance to sit down with the Billy J. Kramer um, back in January. Uh, <clears throat> we were at the Old Castle Pub. I uh, talked with him for about 20 minutes about what it was like working with the Beatles. That was like, I was back in my childhood. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, really you know what Kramer's. else was like being in your childhood? Um, Twenty years ago, for most of the people on this panel, yeah, <laughs> yeah. bunch yeah. of friggin' youngsters. Yeah, what when I know I, about the Beatles. Twenty years ago, I loved the Power Rangers. They were phenomenal, big influence in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Voltron. Voltron, that's pre me, man. Voltron, that that that, that predates me, I'm afraid. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> VCR <laughs> tapes. Atari 2600, Commodore yeah, nope. 64. Yeah, we didn't have anything like the uh, Power Rangers when I was growing up. I was, I was into Bugs Bunny, uh, Yogi Bear. You know? Yogi Bear. He's smarter than the average bear. <laughs> Mighty Mouse. I love Snagglepuss and Boo Boo. 
Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. Daffy Duck and Eggs I was into all Steve those Mel Blanc characters. Well, you know what, Bob? You should consider yourself fortunate that you know that it, we've come to a, to a year now where those characters aren't really profitable anymore. There's not very much profit in them except for the nostalgia profit. Because I grew up in an era oh, of I Thundercats. Think it has to be about money. Because it is. I grew up in an era of Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and now every hack director is interested in annihilating things I loved in my childhood. People are leaving your childhood alone, and yet they're destroying mine with film. Good point. Yeah. Good it makes point. me very sad. Yeah. Your childhood's safe. Enjoy it. Mine's being annihilated uh, every day. Yeah. Ravaged. Just being pillaged. For every penny it's worth. Easy, Tigers. Uh, I'll tell you, if you ever watch any any documentaries on Mel Blanc, uh, the guy was a... His son sounds almost exactly like him. Really? Really? Yeah, Mel Mel Blanc's uh, son does the Bugs Bunny, uh, Piggy, uh, uh, Porky Pig, uh, Daffy Duck voices nowadays. Uh, And 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 because there's... I'm not going to say there's something genetic, but because their voices were similar, because their anatomic structure was similar, because they were... Father, son, um, he's able to replicate those voices so well, but nobody does it as good as Mel Blanc. Oh, Mel Blanc is the master. He had so many of them, and each of them were totally different personalities. He, and that he was put on a different voice, completely different personality. And, and that was Mauty's human development hat showing itself there. <laughs> yeah. And now let me put on my. He, Mel Blanc had to have be. He had to be mentally ill in some very. Powerfully productive ways to do oh, all geez. of that. <laughs> Mowdy, my God! Hey, Jed, we going fishing after this? To go back to the, the whole hats thing. Um, you know uh, that, uh, you know that not a PBR. Uh, oh, Mowdy, you know who you look like um, when you put that hat on. Who are you talking to, Sean? You talking to me, Mowdy? What? You look like Aunt Edna getting out of the station wagon after they jumped that cliff on uh, family vacation. Do you remember? On, Chevy uh, Chase? Yeah, Chevy Chase. After they skyrocketed, you know, did the little... Uh, um, you don't remember the scene? Imogene Coca? I don't know her name. That's the name of the actress, I think. The one that got out of the car and she's like, sit down in your seat or I'll bust your lip. Not ringing a bell? No. <laughs> Mm. The, fr- mm. the Wally World vacation. Are you are you just not with it? Or you no. never saw it? Love hey, Sean, Wally World. Sean, where's Jackie Brown? She's right here. Yeah? Come here. I love Get her Wally on. World. Come here. Come on. She's right there. Oh, yeah. Why don't you show everybody how well-trained she is? How what? Well-trained she is. Like, bust her chops a little bit and then, you know, give it the finger snap. Come here, Jack. Give Daddy a hug. Give, give Daddy a hug. Get up here. Get up here. She really is not. She's not very uh, nimble. Uh, she's not very skilled out. At uh, I can't uh, show you what she's capable of. Look. Look at everybody. Look oh at my Jackie God! Brown. I want it. Oh, uh, Jackie Brown. <laughs> Getting down with the funky sound, Jackie Brown. Jack, what is that? Who's making that noise? Who is that? Oh. Oh, That's Jackie Brown. You remember me, don't you? She you does. Re- me, don't you? The, the, the lab <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Lab girl type dogs are always very sweet and loving. <laughs> I've, I've got a dog. i got two dogs. One of them is a half half black lab, half a greyhound. That dog just loves everybody. It's just so affectionate, so sweet. I have another dog. It's a mud. Hostile is all get out. Loving, but, but all hostile. She looks like she's actually taking part of the conversation right now. <laughs> she, <is. laughs> she thinks she's people. I'd like mm-hmm. to give you my opinion. <laughs> he needs a hat. <laughs> what I mean, she she's, wear? Yeah, get the fedora and we can pretend Dr. Jones has been transformed into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Just teach uh, Jackie Brown how to say uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rassel. <laughs> Rassle. Rassle. Whoa. Can you say wassle? <laughs> Can oh, you say indexicality? She's, <laughs> she's looking like that. She, she sees Dr. Jones and wants to. Here, hop down, mate. <laughs> All right. Good seeing you guys.
Is that a Line 6 bass amp behind you? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I, it's, I used to have Jackie, a bass. Jackie bass Brown, play the bass. Lowdown. It's a Line 6 lowdown? I think so, yeah. yeah. I, there's a, a couple presets in there, but I put one in there. Yeah. There it is. I had a low down before. It was pretty good. That was Jackie Brown. <laughs> you hear that? That's the funk of Dr. Jones. I got a Jones in my bones. I'm talking Dr. Jones. That's a pretty good synth bass uh, setup in it, too. And uh, the Octaver. Yeah. Now, Mowdy took a $40 bass and turned it into something that he could... Uh, he could make, uh, what is that guy, that gentleman that plays so well, uh, Vic, Victor Wooten. Uh, Victor Wooten, oh my goodness, what a, what a player. I mean, when, when, when you're wow. around Christopher Mowdy, you would think that Wooten can't play. I'm serious. I mean, Mowdy is that good. Mowdy is great, but I'll tell you what, Wooten, Wooten, I mean, Chris, <laughs> back me up on this. Wooten is... Master. Woo! Oh, he is he is amazing. And, and he's you know, astounderama. And I, I, I you know and he Victor. has this he has this baby face. He has this sweet face. Yeah. He's like and, I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, oh what's going on now? Oh I'm gonna blow your mind. Here it is. <laughs> you know you know Did you uh, ever uh, see uh, his Eleanor Rigby his version of Eleanor Rigby? No, I don't want to. I love Eleanor Rigby was, and I love Victor oh, Wooten, and I'm sure the two of them would cause explosivo. And it which was just would, amazing. You know, explode the, the, my synapses. The guy is an is is an amazing genius, and what he does with that bass is just incredible. Of course, his brother plays that drum guitar, and it's like. And his other brother guitar. plays the guitar, like he plays the bass, Reggie. Well, yeah, and so. So yeah, he, Future Man plays the drum guitar. Yeah. The drum guitar. Yeah. That's some funny stuff. So, what other hats do you wear, Dr. Jones? You're wearing a hat right now. What's up with that? What kind of hat are you wearing? Are you wearing the hat of a linguist or a host or both? Or uh, somebody who is translating via linguistics? What are you doing? I just got out of the pool, and I'm wearing the hat of a swimmer. Okay. And Next so topic. I'm guessing he was wearing his his grandfather grandpa hat when he was. Oh, like, grandfather. Like, grandfather! Grandfather, grandfather, great grandfather. <laughs> pop up. My dad didn't wear a hat except when there was a, there was a time when if you worked at IBM, all the executives wore this wore, wore a similar hat. It was a dress hat, and they all wore them. But when when they stopped wearing them, my dad stopped wearing it. He just he, you know he dressed to blend and to fit in, and for years IBM. White shirts, white dress shirts, a uh, burgundy tie were about pretty much the only way you were accepted. Even the janitors, some of them would dry, would go to work in a suit, white shirt, get to work, change into their janitorial clothes, and then when they left, they they leave in. Uh... How pointless is that? Yeah. Dr. Jones, you look frozen. Did you did it freeze up on you? No, no, I'm just enjoying the conversation. Uh, I really wanted just to relax tonight, uh, talk a little bit about Nathan Phelps, and uh, see if we could encourage a handful of people to uh, pull things together for us. Because you know, it's going to take many, 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 many people simply to make this thing work, and it's going to be a, a grassroots type thing. And I just want to get people motivated in thinking about what all we can do between now and the 29th to make this a reality for not just Nathan Phelps, but for so many people. Because if this gets made in a very uh, good way, uh, it helps humanity across the board. Prior and, to that day, we, we don't want to push it constantly. No, no. But we, on we, that day... We want to push it in the Cult of Honesty Facebook page 
because we have a lot of people who follow us in there who don't always watch all the shows. And we're like, what are we? Have? We have over 700 people in there watching, uh, you know, the, participating in the cult of honesty. And uh, you know, but we don't have 700 people watching our shows. Right. But but if I can encourage people to recruit everyone that we can for that day, uh, and get people to come our way, people we typically couldn't get. Uh, to be on shows or even advocate X, Y, or Z. Let's do this for the sake of Nate uh, and those people he really has a voice uh, to support. And I think people are listening to Nate Phelps simply because if you're a politician in Washington, if there's someone you're going to listen to, it would be Nate Phelps because of his father. If you're... Um, say, out of the religious community and you see someone as kind and nice as Nate is, you're going to listen to him. I don't care what your theology is. And this guy has a chance uh, to speak to all of us because, in a sense, he has that open door that none of us have, and that is to speak into the hearts of people because he walked out of this abusive situation and everything is just falling right. And I'm simply saying that the window of opportunity is open, and we need to take advantage of that in a positive way. I would also uh, just like this juncture to point out that there is no such thing when it comes to charity, especially charities like this, where you know there's actually going to be a product released. There is no such thing as a contribution that's too small. Anything at all is fine. Anything, exactly. at, any, anything you're comfortable being able to afford is absolutely fine. If you've got a small YouTube channel and only 10 people hear you talk about it, that's that that's yeah. fine. There is no I, such thing. I mean, the Awesome Crew I, Show has your has has the will be supporting this project fully. We're doing a show tomorrow. Um, we probably won't reach that many people. We'll maybe reach three hundred, but that's a contribution. There, find a way to contribute. You can do something. Yeah, I posted it to the um, uh, Facebook page for my atheist group and got like three or four likes on it already just in this time. And I'll I'll send out a mass email as well. And there's a few hundred people on that mailing list. Um, so, yeah, even if you, you know you can't support it financially, um, yeah, spread the link around to, to and people who can will will see it and contribute. And you yeah, need I'm no hope, further uh, motivation. I'm sorry, go on, Doctor Jones. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that Society and Bruggen Cake gives at least five to ten thousand dollars towards this project. <laughs> the money he made last weekend. Come on. Uh, just yeah. the money that he made off of us, he could give that easily. I know he's not exactly a fan of the Westboro Baptist Church, and most people aren't, but I don't think he's much of a fan of Nate's project, though. But I, I think that he needs to step out of the, you know, the, the, um, you know, his his role for a moment and, and just be Saint and Bruggen Kate, and, and I think he's capable of doing that, and so I, I'm not challenging him. I'm simply asking him to be so kind and simply... Uh, put some money in Nate's project. Nate is a wonderful person, and I don't care who talks uh, about Nate. If they will look into his heart, they're going to see so much goodness, so much awesomeness. You can't help but support Nate. John Stewart should do a feature on him. That that oh, would be cool. that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Talk Maybe. about large audience, man. You know, there are people listening to our show, and they can call us, and I want them to get us in contact with the right people to make this happen. And I'm you, know simply, else, you know who else could really um, um, promote Nate at this point in time and probably willing to do so uh, is, uh, I, I can't think of his name right now, you know, the guy who did the Religious uh, movie. Bill Maher. Uh, Bill Maher. Bill, yeah. Bill Maher, yeah. Uh, he, he could, he, this, is, this is right up his alley. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, it would only take one athlete, you know, who's making some big money just to say, hey, listen, I'll do this. You know, athletes tithe a lot, believe it or not. Most of them are Christians, and uh, it's typical for them to give ninety to 100000 or even more than that, a month to local churches. And so this wouldn't be but a you know, drop in the bucket for them to give $10,000, 15000 uh, towards uh, that is towards Nate's uh, project. Uh, that would be fantastic. Now, even if um, you know we don't obviously aren't going to spend the next few weeks talking just about this, but I think it could be an interesting setup for some other 
um, topics in addition to supporting the LGBT community, which we NCG has done plenty of that. I think it this could be a interest provide an interesting setup for talking about um, deconversion and having some people on and giving their deconversion stories and talking about X. Uh, what what's involved, and what people who are coming out of the closet as as atheists and coming out of religion go through. Um, Christopher had uh, both me and uh, Galaxy Dreams on his, uh, a show a show in the last couple weeks, and both of us told our deconversion stories. And uh, there's a few people on on YouTube who have done really incredibly excellent projects uh, telling their stories. One of them is. Um, Finite Atticus. He's I actually he's not not only um, came out of uh, Christianity, but he's also um, he's also gay. So he had to deal with coming out of the closet, and he he was he was married and and had had a kid, and he had to deal with that at the same time as as deconverting. And he has a really excellent series. Gruden had him on the show. He'd be a good person to have on. The other one is Purple Fox. Um, he has one of the most emotional deconversion stories I've ever heard um, because he basically like he was so deep into it that when he started having doubts it started affecting him physically and um, like he, he practically became an atheist in a vacuum without any kind of outside influence um, so if the NCG did a week of shows about about that topic I'd love to see that I'll send some links to the to the people I mentioned. Okay, that that would be wonderful. If anyone knows how to get a hold of just different groups, uh, especially here in the Pensacola area, uh, that are very supportive of the gay, lesbian, let's just say the LGBT movement, I would like to set something up that weekend and do actually something on location that morning um, simply because I, I want this city to recognize uh, there are people who are going to stand up get in the streets and say yes people deserve to be loved protected and supported and I'm simply saying that that community needs our love and acceptance uh, in, a, in a major way. It just doesn't need to be about the law issues. It needs to be about uh, the heart issue. And this is this is where I'm going with it, and I want to see things change in our lifetime. So many people want to come out of the closet but are afraid to. I want to give them uh, that option uh, to where they can come out and say, yes, this is who I am, and I am proud of it. And when that day comes, and I think it's coming soon, uh, it's going to make, I think, all of us uh, extremely happy. And I, I think that when you start seeing that kind of love and happiness, I think that things in the religious community are going to change for the better, if you will. But it's going to take atheists and theists alike working together, willing to give, even though you know there's a trust issue in, in this. In other words, we're working with each other, trusting one another, in various ways, and this is good, this is healthy, this is the way that uh, meaningful community is established and, and can successfully work, and so we need people like Christopher Mowdy, who is so, so talented, so, so brilliant, who can really make it happen. I mean, he, he knows how to not just think, but he knows how to connect with people. He can make videos. He can do shows that will really push this off the charts. I'm not capable of doing it. I'm not exciting, but he is. And the same thing is true with Owen and JD. And JD has the kind of personality. He's so kind, so gentle. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, JD, when people here in the studio who have been religious for all of their lives, when they see you, your gentleness, your kindness, that's what changes the religious mind to say, wow, atheists are awesome. I don't know how many theists sitting in our audience here in the studio have said so many great things about you and other atheists simply because they see good people. But they've been taught all, all of their lives that uh, atheists are wicked people. They don't, they don't love Jesus. Do you see what I'm saying? Wow, I... 
that's I wasn't expecting that. That I, I appreciate all of that. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the stereotype of angry atheist is is a stereotype for a reason. Yes, it's embellished, and people say a lot of things about atheists that aren't true. They generalize, but yeah, the stereotypes out there, and there are a lot of atheists reinforcing it. Why you know, I have to remove myself from the discussion from time to time because I just I get tired of it. And, and let me give a word of advice to atheists. Uh, Religious people are not looking for the facts so much, and you, you guys know that. Religious people are looking for some kind of testimony that is in someone's life, something that's good. And this is why it's amazing to listen to people like Owen. You know, he's an atheist, but he's, he's just saying things that really resonate with theists because it's all about how you, know, you can look within yourself and find something good and feel good about yourself. And this is what inspires people. And uh, people of religion, you know, they, they want to be inspired. In fact, I think they need inspiration. And so I'm simply encouraging atheists, uh, let's have our talks and logic and science, but sometimes play a song, do some poetry, do something that just inspires them. They'll move forward with you. Put on a different hat. Yeah, put on a hat. <laughs> Go on, put a hat on. Yeah. You know, I I often wonder why people come to the conclusions they come to about the LGBT community. Um, I because my perspective on the community itself is took so little thought and so little concentration and and uh, introspection. Mm -hmm. I just kind of decided that for myself, I cannot imagine a more boring topic than who is sleeping with who. I honestly don't care who you're having sex with. I simply don't. I've got better. I t I, you hear these people go, go, going on these um, these rants in these mega churches and on the pulpit and whatever else, saying these homosexuals are corrupting America. I'm thinking to myself, if you're worrying this much about who's sleeping with who, you must not have bills to pay, old boy. You must have no worries at all because that's what of I worry. Of course not. They have a mega church. They don't need to pay bills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You must not be worried about those taxes. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're not worried about that either. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. You, you, what What is going on in your life that you start to care about who is sleeping with who? As long as everyone's an adult and everyone's up for it, it I really couldn't care kind less. Like, well, it's kind of like high school, you know. Right. People there seem to care about who's sleeping with who, and I didn't give a toss then, and I don't give a toss now. Right. It's uh yeah so I often wonder what's 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 in the mindset because I don't think that um distaste for for the LGBT community comes from necessarily religion. I don't I, I think that religion is an easy expression for it. it's an easy way to express it right, but I don't think that's where it comes from. I think most of us find that um we we each have a sense of what we're sexually attracted to and the 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 idea to us of being sexually engaged in some activity that we're not attracted to is, is for most people, kind of uh, repulsive or repugnant. But uh, it, it, that's more just to do with our, orient our own personal orientation. It, it doesn't say anything about anyone else's, you know. And, but, um, you know, it, I, so I suppose that's, that's where some of it comes from uh, that it gets then mixed in with this, if you're not like me, there's something wrong with you or something, you know. But... Um, Sure, sure. I think some of it is uh, fitting into, you know, if, like, um, you're part of a church community and you know this view about um, sexual orientation unites you, you know, like, that being yes. a evil, if that's what unites you and you know that if you go against that, then... Um, what community you have, which is why I think shows like this are important so people know that both theists and atheists, that no matter what you're a part of, if you leave that one community, another community will embrace you for embracing others. And mm -hmm. um, the sad thing is that many people who are in that predicament, predicament, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that are in that predicament, they... Um, you need to be oh, wearing no. this hat for that. Uh.
a lot of people who, who are in that, they don't, they have been trained not to trust themselves. They have been trained that their heart might lead them in the wrong direction. They've been trained that even though they might feel like accepting these people is okay, that feeling might be wrong. And so, which is why I think um, the the Nate documentary is so good because anything we can do to encourage people that what they're feeling is okay and that if you're a Christian and you don't see a problem with a lesbian couple or a gay pe a couple, that's okay. And we got to encourage people that it's that's okay. You know, that's fine. That's why I think also um, along the same lines, the doing a, a, some shows about a deep conversion and having the people on that I mentioned is also important because I think that even more than the LGBT issue, um, we don't most. Most of the people in NCG can identify even cl closer with coming out of religion. I think one of the reasons that I fit in so well here is because so many of the people here are ex-fundamentalists like Dr. Jones and Bob and Daryl and, and Ozzy. Um, and we don't, unfortunately, I wish we had more. We don't have as many LGBT people. But, yeah, people are, eh, there's, a, there's a lot of people in the closet over their beliefs and deal with a lot of the same issues, unfortunately, and sometimes there's just, they don't know where to go for support. Some people have never even, or they, they've they never met an out atheist in their in their entire life. Well, I'm, I'm the new toy at my job. Only recently, this past week, has it come out that I'm an atheist. Oh, um, really? That's yeah, it just, the, 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 the top got popped off of that. It, it wasn't like I was hiding it from people or anything else. It just, it just sort of never came up before. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really mm -hmm. an issue. There. Uh, one of my colleagues, particularly my supervisor, invited me to go to church with them, and I said, oh, I don't really do that. He says, well, why not? I says, ah, I'm not an atheist. I don't really believe that stuff. And all of a sudden, I became the brand new shiny toy at my job, where people were people were so interested to know what I thought about this, I thought about that, and they but they weren't discriminatory. They were always friendly. Um, you know, trying to have the conversation with somebody who says, "Hey, man, I don't think I'm no damn stinking ape." Uh, you know, it's it, it, it takes a moment where you have to say to yourself, "Okay, how do I talk to this person? How far do I really want to go with them? Um, what's the best tack here?" And um, you know. And understanding as well that I have to work with these people, like you know what I mean. I need to; they rely on me, and I need to rely on them. Like you know, so it's it, it, delicate, delicate balance. Yeah, um, well, I try to be as honest, are, but as gentle as possible. People are, you know, they're attracted to novelty, and you know, never met if you've never met an atheist before, never talked to one. It's yeah. I could definitely understand that. Same with you know, meeting someone who's gay for the first time. You might have some odd questions, but. <laughs> it's not taught. Like, the kind of the, the LGBT issues, the kind of stuff that trans people deal with, that gays and lesbians deal with, that's not taught in sex ed. Oh, some, in some states, it's it's like there are laws in the books forbidding that from being discussed in sex ed. Dr. Jones just handed out the dollar bills there. Just hand them out. The dollar, dollar bill. Throwing out that money. Throwing the money out. Throwing the money out. That's right. He's probably ordering it for sandwiches. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful that you were able to share that, and um, people were positive. Is that correct? Oh yeah, no, they weren't. I wouldn't say with positive. They weren't negative. I didn't get attacked. I don't. I don't feel marginalized. They had a lot of tough questions. Um, they. Some people kind of might have interpreted it as a negative way. As my, what my, my supervisor particularly says, you know, man, I pray for you every night now. I pray for you every night that Jesus is going to come in your life. He's going to touch your heart. But I know enough to know that that's a compliment. Like, you know what I mean? He's wishing well for me. I don't believe it's going to happen, but he's wishing well for me. I know enough about the guy to know that that's true. But still, some people might think that's being condescending or whatever. But, yeah, I, I, I would say it's more or less good. Yeah, I kind of interpret... Um the I'll, I'll saying I'll pray for you is um, in the religious lexicon is meaning like I'll keep you in my thoughts. Right, right. Now some people don't mean it that way. It's uh, sometimes it saying I'll pray for you is it, it perceived it, as offensive. Sometimes it is depending on. It the has several functions. It yes. can also mean yes. you're wrong, and I'm not going to tell you how wrong you are. 
but uh, God will show you someday just how wrong you are. So I'll <laughs> pray for you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think they say those things uh, to um, I'm I'm trying to say this in a kind way and be patient with me, but I I think that sometimes. And, and I've been guilty of this. I would say, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to pray for you. It, it was my way of not dealing with the facts. It was my way of saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. It's it's like you know, when you approach someone who has cancer, who is dying, oh, you know, brother, we really do love you. Let me pray for you right now. In Jesus' name, I want you to, uh, God, I want you to heal Heal this person in Jesus' name, Amen. You just look forward to your healing, and you just walk away. It's 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 kind of like denying the facts and just saying, "I really don't know what to say, but I'm just going to say this and kind of dodge." You know what I'm talking about, Bob? I have I I I, I don't I can't do that myself. I couldn't. You know, I've had some people ask me to pray for them, and I I. I can pray for them, and I can pray with them, and I pray aloud. But I, I, I usually find some more diplomatic way of, of, of saying things, such as, um, you know, uh, I pray for that they might find peace and comfort in the presence of God, and that this would be a, a meaningful uh, experience as they, uh, as they work through the issues that they're going through, however they may turn out, and you know, I'm, but I, I don't pray that you know, that God will, uh, you know, heal them or save them. Or, no, I'm talking or, about or turn what the daughter around. And, years ago, I'm not talking about what I do now. Oh, uh, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had pretty you know you don't do that. Oh, oh, I'm, me. I'm there. Please I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah, touch the radio. No, okay. no, whatever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'm not talking about what I do now. I'm talking yeah. about what I used to do, you know, when I was 18 and 19 years old. Yeah, I'll pray for you. Oh, waiting for somebody to be healed. That was, you know, that well, that'd be awesome if somebody would do that. And, yeah. and and I did actually at one time. Someone asked me to pray for them, and um, they they had MS, and it went into remission after we prayed. That was weird, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, and 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 you when you would pray for homosexuals, you know, you wanted them to be like you, you know, a heterosexual. You know, I never, I, I, I back in 1978, uh, I I had a guitar player friend of mine who was going through a divorce, and he was calling me on the phone. We had only met, you know, three weeks earlier, but we we're going to work on a on a project together. And you know he was calling me because he was concerned about things. I was a pastor at the time, and he um, he was uh, he, he poured his heart out to me. And then you know about two weeks into this, he called me like almost every other night. He was really going, uh, but two weeks into it, he he confessed to me that he loved me, and he was hoping that there might be a relationship there. And and I had to tell him. I said, look, you know I care about you as a human being, but uh, I, 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 you need to understand, uh, this is not going to happen just because it, it, I don't work that way. <laughs> you know? But I, I, it did not bother me. I did not feel any need to change him. I, um, and and I, it's not so much that I wasn't at that time theologically uh, in, in that. I just didn't see this is the way that that that, that happens. Uh, that changes. You know, I did. That uh, or that there was perhaps even any hope. I don't know, but I, but I, but I do remember, you know, th that one incident. And to me, I just, I just wanted to love him as a human being and and care about him what he's going through. And, and that was, uh, you know, to me, even at that time, far more important than what what sense I made of it or how I theologically coped with it and all that crap. You know, I've, every time I'm propositioned by. Anyone or anyone who offers any kind of romantic interest in me, ma male or female, I always find it complimentary. Always. Yeah. Never anything but never never have a, never had a bad feeling about it. Hey, someone thinks I'm attractive. Thank you. Yes, I will continue to buy the drink the drinks you buy me, but I will not be going to bed with you. Thank you very much. But I appreciate yeah. the sentiment. Yeah, and you're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> we have something in common. High five. <laughs> 
<laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Oh, you think I'm awesome? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, I think that, um, especially when it comes to when we talk about some of the small-minded people, especially like the Westboro Baptist Church and people like that, I just, I find it hard to, you know, I try and, I try and live a life where I think that I try and see the, at least some of the best in everybody, and I try and encourage everyone that I talk to to try and be as good as they can possibly be at anything they try and do. Um, uh, model yourself after the best and uh, try and follow through with that. But when I think about the people of the Westboro Baptist Church, but not the kids, uh, the leaders, uh, the, the adults who encourage children to behave this way, I genuinely don't feel like there's room for them anymore in modern society. I just don't mm -hmm. think there's any space for them left. They don't belong here, if this is the way they're going to think, behave, and act. And it's a very awful, nasty little thought that occupies the corner of my brain. No, but I, I don't, it's, I don't, it's I don't really see a way forward with them. I, I, it, it is such a strange behavior. I can't, you know, it, it is one thing to entertain a notion in theory, but when you're actually doing something that has an impact on another human being, it, 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 there, there's parts of you that are missing. If if that doesn't somehow touch you or impact you, it reminds me of that that movie uh, that um, uh, uh, Tom Cruise was in, where he was the hitman, and it was Jamie Jamie the, Farr, wasn't it? Oh, I can't remember Tom what it was. Cruise, yes, he's a collateral. Jamie, Jamie Fox. It's collateral. Right, Jamie yeah. Fox, right, right. And and the the guy was so sociopathic. It was like it's like he had no concern or empathy for anybody. And that I, I just don't. That scares me. I don't. I don't see how how you can do that. It 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 it, it requires some. I don't know. Um, I don't even understand how a person could do that, even being messed up, you know. But evidently, it, it happens, you know. That's Major that. mental malfunction. Well, this is bigger than that, though. This is a group think kind of a situation. You know what I mean? Everyone in this organization is doing this and behaving this way, and there's no way to correct it. They cannot be corrected. I think it. I think it speaks to outside of the specific group that we're talking about, the Westboro Baptist Church, something that stops me in my tracks when I think about the Westboro Baptist Church and the videos that I've seen of them and stuff that I've read about them and that they've put out is how easy it is to hate. That's, that's the easy road, and that's the road people take sometimes. And while you can say that about the Westboro Baptist Church, that they hate certain people, um, the same can be said for those who are shining the spotlight on them. That they don't look beyond what it is that they're saying and the signs they're holding and the message they're spewing. They just look at a group that it, they find it easy to, to hate. And for what they think are all the right reasons too. And, and they lose sight of what is behind all of that and that's human beings. Well, um, they they we, when we think of when we when guys like you and I hate JD, we hate from anger, right? It's anger that leads us to hatred. Um, but for them, I feel like it's different. You know what I mean? They think that they're. They, I've heard them say a number of times when they give out the warning, they're showing their love for you. Right? It's easier for them to hate because they're not hating with anger. Anger is tiring. It's hard to maintain. It literally burns resources. It's exhausting to be angry and stay that way. But they're hating with compassion. They're, 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 they're using love to push a message of hate, and compassion is a really easy emotion to do. Yeah, they, they spin it and, re, and redefine the words to mean pretty much the opposite, but, you know... It, 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 I'm sure it it, it, it it makes it less contradictory to the Christian, you know, n narrative because you know Jesus said we're supposed to love people who are different and not hate our enemies but love them. Well, yeah, a lot of the actions of people who claim to follow Jesus don't really fall in line with that. So you know, you need to redefine love to mean something else. Yeah. Well, how much? 
how much more loving can I be than to be than to make it extremely clear to you for your own well-being that you're headed for hell? Yeah. Um, but See, even even when I was in that, you know, I knew the the kind of games that you play in your own mind, you know, because there is there is a part of you that recognizes humanity and you have to constantly kill that part of you to hold that view and so they say one thing but what people say and then what's behind what they say is something completely different so you know I, I, I still have hope for them I mean you have someone like Nate Phillips who came out of that that kind of atmosphere and he's doing wonderful things now and you never know what's going to be the catalyst to for someone in that situation to to um, stop ignoring that nagging feeling in them that what they're doing is is horrible and um, so you just never know what's going to set someone free from that. Uh, we are almost out of time. The link uh, that is for Kickstarter, the Nathan. Phelps project. It's in the description of the show tonight. And so uh, do everyone a favor. Uh, find your way there and uh, put some money in there if you can. Uh, that would be really good for everyone. I'd like to thank every one of you guys for uh, coming our way. And I'm, I'm going to pick on someone right now because he hasn't said a lot tonight. Uh, J.D., I want you to say the most powerful thing that you can right now to really make this happen for us on the 29th. Oh, boy. Um, well, when I, when, I, when I think of what it is that's required for a, a project like this, you first have to take stock of what your assets are. And in a, a group like the NCG, your, your assets are your people. And so the, the, the project is only going to go as far as the people who are carrying it can carry it. Um, so those of us who are engaged in, in the conversation and are part of the Facebook page and, um, you know, spread it out to our, to our own circles. We, we all have our own networks that reach far beyond what, what NCG can reach. Um, but on the flip side of that is, is the people that we have welcomed into the conversation on, on NCG. People like Aaron Ra, people like Steve Shives, uh, these are people who have a platform of their own already that can um, be used as, as an asset to, to get the message out there to, to more people than we could reach on our own. And we're not on our own. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the people of, uh, of NCG. It's the people that we're going to talk to and, and that we reach ultimately. That will will be the best asset, and that's what we should we should push for. I do thank you for those kind words. I'm so much behind what you're uh, suggesting there. Um, Bob, would you close us out? Wow, you know, I enjoyed the uh, the chit chat tonight. And the hats were a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, some of us are still having fun, and. Uh, and I'm glad we got a chance to even talk about um, Nate as a, just a, a kind, and decent human being. When we had him on the show, you, you just have to like him. I mean, he, he's just one of those people that um, he, he, he could be your buddy, you know, and, and, and to admire what he has done and, and after what he has been through and what the road must have been, I think this documentary... Is, is a powerful healing opportunity for what we're um, what we've been through the the Westboro Baptist Church such a scar uh, I mean even offensive to many people who are even tr traditional um, in, in their spirituality really irritated with what uh, Westboro is doing but um, you know for Nate to come along this mo this movie this documentary can actually a heal a lot of those scars yes. can make make a big difference can can make us realize that you know we can recover from this we can 
and, and, and people will be affected by this. I'm curious to find out after this documentary is made how many people who at one time were sympathetic to the Westboro Baptist Church, um, or at least were sympathetic to the notion that uh, that there's something wrong with LGBT people, will see this and have a powerful change of heart. Uh, this will create for them the distance they need. I I'm, I'm hoping that happens. And the, you don't have to be an atheist. You don't have to. Uh, doesn't matter if you're a theist uh, to actually get that message out of it. Uh, it'll it'll be powerful and it'll be there. And so uh, I think it's awesome that we're that we're speaking out in support of it. And I I intend to uh, I, I intend to promote as best as I can as well. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys to do one last thing at the end of the program. I want all of you guys on the count of three to say we support you, Nathan Phelps. And we will do so on the 29th. And so when I say one, two, three, you guys just scream it out. One, two, three. We support Nathan Phelps. We'll do so on the 29th. On the 29th of this month. This month. The 29th. Awesome. <laughs> Beautiful choir. Bye-bye.